Now, if you follow my channel, you know I reviewed the Surface Pro line through the years, of course, through every iteration, and I've, it's one of my favorite two-in-one detachables of all time. It really set the standard when Microsoft uh, did that reference design and released it to the public, hoping that the OEMs would pick it up. And there have been some variations of it over the years from the other uh, partners and brands, of course, but the one that I always came back to was a Surface Pro, but it wasn't perfect throughout the years. One of the things that I thought was missing was an OLED display option. I wanted to see better battery life. I wanted it to run cool and quiet, none of which was the case. Well, that all changes here this year in 2024 with the release of the Surface Pro 11. And that's the one we're gonna look at here today. It's running the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite, the 8100 variant. And I'm seeing good single, good multi-core performance. I'm seeing it run cool and quiet. And I'm also seeing excellent battery life. Remember, this is a two-in-one detachable that you can use in various different modes. Now, of course, it's not cheap. We're gonna talk about the price and how expensive the accessories are, which I think are a must-have if you wanna be productive. But my overall takeaway is this is something pretty special. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my full review of the Microsoft Surface Pro 11 running the brand new Snapdragon X Elite with the OLED display here for 2024. Coming up. Now, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Microsoft. I'm not being sponsored by Microsoft. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Microsoft is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. This is not a review unit from Microsoft. Now, as much as I love the Surface Pro line, I will admit this, especially with this OLED model, it is pretty expensive here. For just a tablet portion alone, you're looking at $1,500. Of course, it has a starting price of $999 or $899 if you're a student teacher or in the military. But if you're looking at it at a value proposition, really might not be the best proposition out there, although it is pretty unique in a lot of ways because you can add the keyboard cover and the pen to become more productive. Now, speaking of which, I picked up that very expensive ProFlex keyboard and with the pen combination with the Slim Pen 2 and it is $450 which is quite a bit to pay but I will say this it's worked out really well I like the fact that it has a Sensil haptic touchpad the first of its kind in a detachable keyboard very nice in that regard as far as the responsiveness and everything else and it does have a place to store and charge the pen which is very convenient and as far as the keyboard it is good in terms of the tactility and the overall feedback and I think it's essential if you're going to buy this, you want to get that, especially if you want to be more productive. Now, if you're looking for more information or you want to buy it, there is an affiliate link in the description below. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I've pretty much reviewed every iteration of the Surface Pro through the years. And one of my biggest complaints was the lack of an OLED option. All these other laptops and manufacturers were making OLED displays. Microsoft was late to the game, but they finally listened and added an OLED display. And what does that bring to the table? Well, you get the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast, all the hallmarks of an OLED display. You're getting great color accuracy and excellent coverage of the color gamut. So if you're going to do content creation in Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, say in DaVinci Resolve, if you're going to use the ARM-based beta version, that's number 19 in terms of that, We'll talk about that later, but you are able to do it and you're going to get a better experience with the OLED display. Now, the other thing that the OLED brings is a great media consumption experience, watching movies and Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, especially with HDR content. You're looking at some excellent results here, and it's a much better viewing experience with the OLED display. Now, that being said, there are some downsides to OLED. One of the things you may have to worry about down the road is something called screen burn-in, although I haven't really experienced it all that much with any of the modern laptops running an OLED display for the last few years. I do have an issue of that with my LG OLED TV that I bought about four or five years ago. It's now displaying some issues in terms of burning, but that's a different story. Here in this laptop, I really have not had that issue in terms of all the laptops I've been looking at. The other thing you have to be aware of with an OLED display is that dot matrix or that screen door effect that you might see, especially with a touch layer. I didn't really see it too bad on this, although if you look pretty close, you might see it. 
And the other thing it uses is something called PWM or screen flickering, which is present in most OLED displays, and some people are sensitive to that. So just be aware of that. But the overall takeaway is this is an excellent display, and I'm glad Microsoft finally, finally put an OLED option here. Again, if you want to go at that $999 starting price with the Snapdragon X Plus, with the LCD, it is an option. You save a lot of money. But if you want that little extra something, a little bit better pizzazz, go with this OLED option. Now, another thing I wanted to point out, it is a glossy display, not overly glossy, but depending on your lighting conditions, you might have some issues, especially in direct sunlight. But because it gets pretty bright, 545 nits in terms of standard dynamic range, even higher when you're consuming HDR. So very good brightness in terms of this display. So you're not going to have too much of an issue indoors. Outdoors, it might be an issue. But again, the glossiness and the reflections might be there. But overall, this is an excellent display. Kudos to Microsoft. They did a fantastic job here. This has a really nice camera. What do you think about it for video conferencing? What do you think about it for the audio quality? Is it good? Now, it does have an AI, all the AI effects, of course. It does have an NPU with up to 45 uh, tops, of course. We know that's been hyped up. Now, the studio effects will give you that auto framing. Here it is. So it works pretty good, actually. Uh, really uh, responsive. As you can see, it keeps me in frame. All right, let's turn that off. You got eye contact, and then you have the background blur effect. You got standard blur, and then you've got portrait blur. I think it actually does a pretty reasonable job here, pretty good. Uh, what do you think about everything? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, as I mentioned earlier and in the previous video, the ProFlex keyboard is a very intriguing accessory to make you more productive, but it is also very expensive, coming in at $450, bundled with the Slim Pen 2. So it does make you more productive with the keyboard and the pen, although, again, it will uh, affect your wallet. There's no doubt about it. But I like the raised typing angle that you can get when you put the flap down, as you see here. So that's a nice little feature there. It also stores and charges the pen, so that means it's going to be great. You don't have to worry about losing it. Now, the pen itself is actually okay. Okay, in terms of taking notes, sketching an artwork. It has some haptic feedback and also feels like pen to paper. So they did a really good job in terms of the pen. Now, when it comes to the touchpad, well, good news, as I mentioned in that previous video, this is a Sensil haptic touchpad. So you're going to get the best haptics in the business, two finger scrolling, doing all the gestures. Everything worked very well. The responsiveness was spot on. They did an excellent job. I'm glad to see Sensil in the surface line here in 2024. And my overall takeaway is this ProFlex keyboard is a very expensive accessory, but it is a very good accessory when it comes to getting productivity work done on the Surface Pro 11. Now, this also sports a 10 megapixel Ultra HD or UHD camera, rear facing camera on the back. That'll be good for, you know, taking a picture of some of your notes in your classroom or in a meeting. But I really don't use a tablet to take photos or videos all that much, but it's there if you need it. If you want some examples, I will give you some. But again, it's not a big priority for me. Okay, let's talk about the ports. There are two USB Type-C ports, the USB 4.0, and they have Thunderbolt functionality. I was able to use my Sabrent SSD drive. It's a Thunderbolt drive, worked without any issues. You also get your Surface Connect port on the other side, and you get your power button along with your volume rocker up and down on the top. Now, unfortunately, there's no headphone jack, there's no USB-A port, and there's no HDMI on this, so just be aware of that. Now, one of the big selling features that Microsoft and Qualcomm have been touting, especially with this ARM-based processor, is better battery life, better efficiency to run cool and quiet and give you good longevity here. And when we look at the Microsoft Surface Pro 11, it has a 53-watt-hour battery, and it got 12 hours and 18 minutes on the video playback test that I ran. 4K video streamed over YouTube via Wi-Fi with the brightness set to 40%, put it in the balance mode, and I had the 120 hertz enabled, and I got over over 12 hours. So that was actually pretty impressive. Now, of course, one thing I will say is everybody's use case is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. But one of the themes I've been seeing with these Copilot Plus PCs for the last couple of weeks is excellent battery life. Now, of course, some of them have bigger batteries than others and will get a little bit better battery life. For instance, in Sibling, the Surface Laptop 7 got over 20 hours on that same test. So just keep that in mind. It just depends on the form factor and just how you use your laptop in general. But my overall takeaway is good battery life here with the Surface Pro 11.
Now, I've been using this for the last couple of weeks, and performance actually has been very good. Now, this is running the Snapdragon X Elite, the X1E8100. Now, I'm going to show you one on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, the 16-inch, which has the 84100, which is the top of the line, or at least so far. And it does get the dual-core boost here. That is something you don't get with the 78100 that you find in, say, something like the Yoga Slim 7X. But when you're running synthetic benchmarks like Geekbench 6, single-core score of 20 2849, that is a very good result. And it has very good multi-core performance, scoring 14,339. So my overall takeaway, pretty much most of these Copilot Plus PCs are seeing very good single and multi-core performance. And when you're sticking to native ARM apps, when you're doing Microsoft Office, email and web browsing, all those things, everything works very well, very fluid, very quiet. It doesn't overheat. You don't hear this fan noise. Everything is very great in terms of the experience and that is great where you're going to run into some trouble where it can get a little bit hit or miss is when you're doing things that it's really not great at at least not yet like gaming for instance it can work very well i was able to run asphalt 9 legends and it worked very well there were no hiccups very fluid very smooth gameplay no drop frames or anything like that even if it's emulating which i think it is and it actually worked out really well now other titles not so much it's been pretty much hit or miss whether it actually would run in the first place or if it would run properly. And as far as 4K video editing, you can do it on DaVinci Resolve, the Beta 19 that I was able to run, but it didn't run all that great. There was a few hiccups here and there, a few bugs, but it got the job done. And as far as Premiere Pro and After Effects from Adobe, that's coming later, not available for the ARM native yet, but that should be coming soon. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be looking at this versus, say, something like the new iPad Pro running that new M4 processor from Apple. And I did my review on that 13-inch variant. For those that didn't see it, I'll drop a link in the description below. My takeaway from that is the hardware was certainly advanced, more advanced, or way ahead of the software. And that's where I think the Surface Pro 11 has an advantage over the iPad Pro in terms of getting productivity work in Office applications. When using something like Microsoft Office, which runs natively, on the Surface Pro 11, you're going to get a better experience. Now, the single core and multi core performance is very good on the Surface Pro 11. Uh, we're seeing better single core on the iPad Pro, but I don't think it's really taking advantage of that due to the software limitations on the iPad Pro. Uh, but we are seeing better multi core on the Surface Pro 11, scoring 14,339 versus 13,046. So I think the advantage to me overall in getting work done is going to go to the Surface Pro 11. Okay, let's talk about the temperatures here. Fan noise and the temperatures here were actually really good, relatively cool and quiet. Although if you put it under heavy load here, as I was doing when I was running this test, you'll notice at about 45, maybe 46 degrees Celsius where you plug in. And then of course, on the uh, front of the unit, never getting overly hot. Even when I was running a video, it didn't get overly hot. So not an issue in terms of the surface temperatures, even under load. But if you're going to be running it under a heavy load, and sometimes I did notice it when watching even a video it could get as high as 44 45 decibels which is noticeable but not the loudest thing i've ever heard and for the most part remain quiet when you're just doing everyday tasks for the most part it could run some of the fan noise when you're doing some updates so just keep that in mind but overall cool and quiet now, I do appreciate the fact they leave a latch on the bottom when you lift up the kickstand. That reveals the very small form factor SSD that is user expandable, which I like to see. I have 512 gigabytes here. It's the 2230 form factor. It's that very small form factor. But I'm not seeing the greatest reads and writes, but certainly fast enough for doing everyday tasks. No issue on that front. But I do like the fact that you can expand it out yourself. Now, I fix it. Did a teardown of the Surface Pro 11 along with its sibling, the Surface Laptop set. And you can see here that, you know, getting inside of it may not be the easiest. Now, the Surface Laptop 7 will be easier. I'll show you in that video when I do my full review on that. But iFixit did a great job here showing you just exactly how to change out the battery, how to get inside. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Once again, they do an excellent job there. And there's really no reason, I don't think, for you to go in other than to maybe change out that battery, like I said. But there are some parts you may be able to swap out. The RAM, of course, is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. And the only thing you can change out here, of course, is going to be that storage. And if you are daring enough to open it up, you can also change out the battery potentially. 
Now, of course, this being a Copilot Plus PC, you're going to get that Copilot button on the keyboard, and that key, when pressed, allows you to use the Copilot functionality. Let's show you an example here now. Who is YouTuber Andrew Mark David? Andrew Mark David is an award-winning tech reviewer known for his insightful laptop reviews. He runs a YouTube channel with over 162,000 subscribers where he shares detailed information about various laptops, their features, and performance. His channel covers a wide range of laptop categories, including general purpose laptops, budget options, portable laptops, gaming laptops, and more. If you're interested in staying up to date with the latest laptop trends, his channel is a great resource. Now, I know there was a lot of hype about that recall feature that was a scratch, a late minute scratch, of course, when they pulled it due to security and privacy concerns. And that, of course, is supposedly coming later, at least according to Microsoft. No timetable given. So we'll see. Of course, the proof will be in the pudding once they do release that. It looked very promising. I was kind of looking forward to testing that out. But, of course, we'll have to wait for that. Now, there are some other AI features that I think are pretty important here and pretty interesting. And one of them is the live translate feature, which I thought were Work very well. Once activated, you can actually translate from any number of languages in real time to say English, and I thought it worked out really well. Let's show you an example. And you could do some very rudimentary drawings in the Paint app now with the co-creator feature, and that will give you an AI-generated image. Now, I don't know how useful this will be, although I thought it did okay when I asked it to draw a Dash Hound dog, and of course, it did it. So I'm not going to complain too much here. It's an interesting feature. I'm not sure how useful it is in everyday use, but you never know. We'll have to see. Now, when it comes to the audio, the Surface Pro 11 sports 2-watt stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos. Now, with Dolby Atmos, that's going to help with the spatial audio. I thought the overall volume was good, the sound was good, and it filled up a room pretty nicely. It also had pretty good bass as well. So the overall sound, I would say, is very good on the Surface Pro 11. Okay, let's wrap it all up. What do I think about the Surface Pro 11 from Microsoft here for 2024? And I got to say, they did a hell of a job here. And I think Microsoft and Qualcomm pretty much delivered on a lot of the promises they made coming into this. Now, I love the fact that they moved to an OLED display option here. That's an excellent one, although it is a bit expensive. It does bring a lot of pizzazz to this. It really ups it a notch, that's for sure. Very good battery life. That's one of the things I was looking for. Class leading NPU performance, at least for now. Now. We'll see what AMD has up their sleeve. Finally, mainstream Intel comparable performance, actually surpassing it in some areas, especially multi-core. Nice kickstand, user upgradable storage, gorgeous sapphire color, excellent build and design. There's a lot to like here. And there are some negatives. It's not perfect, of course. I would say the graphics have been hit or miss. Optional pen and keyboard can get expensive, that's for sure. And I notice it can get pretty hot while plugged in or intense usage. And you'll notice the fan will kick in under those scenarios. But when you're doing everyday tasks, it wasn't an issue in terms of it running cool and quiet. But I think Microsoft here hit a home run, hit it out of the ballpark, and earning a score of 92% earning my editor's choice here for the two-in-one detachable here for 2024. Kudos to Microsoft, kudos to Qualcomm. They did an excellent job here in a really nice product overall. And I think it will only get better through updates as things become more compatible, as drivers get updated, things will be better in terms for gaming as well as peripherals and the like. But overall, good job here by Microsoft. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.